Welcome to Junk Food History. Today, Chris will discuss the Kit Kat Bar, CandyCritic.org's number one rated candy. One, two, one, two, three. Four. Give me a break, give me a break, break me off a piece of that Kit Kat Bar. Give me a break, Woo! give me a break, break me off a piece of that Kit Kat Bar. That chocolate crisp taste's gonna make your day. The Kit Kat Bar is one of the most recognizable candy bars in the world. Although the format may seem unoriginal, it's only because the Kit Kat Bar originated this format from a very long time ago. If you see a one, two, or four-fingered bar with wafers made by any other brand, it's most likely a copy of a Kit Kat Bar. The name Kit Kat was not taken out of the blue. The name has been associated with food since the early 18th century. The term is said to have been popularized by a club known as the Kit Kat Club. This club was a popular place for Londoners at the time to discuss politics. The name of the club is said to have come from the famous pies made by the owner, Christopher Catling, or Kit Kat for short. The Kit Kat pie was a popular mutton pie served at this tavern where the Kit Kat Club would meet. Roundtree, the creators of the Kit Kat bar, wouldn't trademark the name Kit Kat and Kit Kat one spelled K-I-T-C-A-T and the other K-I-T-K-A-T until 1911. And it wasn't until the 1920s that Roundtree actually released a box of chocolates that went by the name Kit Kat, K-I-T-C-A-T. These chocolates remained on the market for about 10 years until they were eventually overshadowed by other box chocolates made by Roundtree. It wasn't until August 29th, 1935 that the Kit Kat bar that we know and love first made its way onto the market. The bar was manufactured in Roundtree's York factory. At the time, the bar was called Roundtree's Chocolate Crisp. The bar was mainly sold in London and areas in southern England. In 1937, George Harris, marketing director for Roundtree, rebranded the bar as Kit Kat Chocolate Crisp. This was also the first year that the word break was used in advertising campaigns for the bar. We'll eat when you get the fire going. Before lunch, I'd like to say a few words. When you get the urge for a delicious snack, have a Kit Kat. Light crispy wafers with chocolatey cream smothered in rich milk chocolate. Kit Kat's irresistible. The next train, it'll be along sometime. So when you get the urge for a delicious snack, have a Kit Kat. Since the inception of the Kit Kat bar, one of the key marketing aspects of the bar is the bright red package. But this wasn't always the case. In 1942, during the Second World War, there was a shortage of ingredients, including milk. Roundtree changed the recipe of the Kit Kat bar during this time. They also changed the wrapper. The wrapper was changed to blue, and the oval logo was removed, as were the words chocolate crisp. Seven years later, the recipe for the Kit Kat bar was turned to normal, and the package was returned to its bright red color again. The words chocolate crisp, however, did not return. The 1950s turned out to be a big decade for the Kit Kat bar. Before this time, the bar was only available in the UK. But during this decade, the bar became available in Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and Canada. The US had yet to sample this delight and wouldn't for another 10 or 20 years. While the Kit Kat bar was expanding its reach, Donald Gillis, the executive, an executive at JWT London, created a slogan for the bar that would prove to last for generations. The famous have a break, have a Kit Kat slogan would go on to be one of the most famous advertising slogans in the world and would be synonymous with the brand forevermore. Have a break. Have a Kit Kat. Hmm. In the 1960s, the bar continued to gain popularity and sold very well. The only evolution at that time came with the introduction of the two-finger bar. 
Before this time, KitKat bars were only available in the common four-finger variety. But mini bars started to gain popularity in the 60s, and having the KitKat bar in this format was a perfect fit. In the 1970s, the KitKat bar started to spread even further around the world. In Europe, the expansion was so great that another factory had to be built to produce them. This factory was located in Hamburg, Germany. But this wasn't the only expansion. In the US, Americans wanted to break off a piece of a KitKat bar, and the Hershey Company was going to help them out. For the first time ever, Roundtree licensed their products to the US markets through another company. Soon afterwards, Fujia, a company in Japan, made a deal to manufacture KitKats as well. The 1970s proved to be a year where the KitKat bar would truly become a global brand. 1988 would prove to be one of the biggest changes in the corporate world of Roundtree. This was the year that Roundtree, the small chocolate company out of York, England, would be bought out by the giant corporation Nestle. Nestle would continue the licensing agreement with Hershey and Fujia to produce the bars in Japan and in the US, but everywhere else in the world, Nestle was now the maker of KitKat. The popularity of the KitKat bar was growing even more, thanks to the global brand Nestle promoting it. The problem now was that it was getting difficult to ship the bar all over the world. So Nestle opened several more KitKat factories in Malaysia, India, China to feed this global demand. You'd think that a bar like KitKat, popular all over the world, there would be no reason to change anything, but that's not the case. In the 1990s, a decade of variations, a trend in candy that continues to this day. Variation is what happens when a chocolate bar is given a slight twist in order to give the bar a new audience or something to create buzz. In 1996, the Kit Kat Orange was the first variant of Kit Kat Bar, and it was launched in the UK. Three years later, in 1999, the Kit Kat Chunky launched in the UK and was a huge success. Almost instantly, the Chunky was launched into other markets as well. I'm sorry. With more varieties and a steady growing popularity in the 2000s, it would mean an expansion for the bar. Manufacturing operations were set up in Bulgaria, Russia, Turkey, and Venezuela to deal with the demand. Nestle also bought out the Japanese company Fujia's stake in the Kit Kat bar. In the 2000s, Japan would also become the hotbed of the Kit Kat gimmicks that still remains to this day. During this decade, Japan would release several strange flavors of Kit Kat bar and would continue to do this till the present. Presently, Japan has released more than 200 varieties of Kit Kat bar, including wasabi, apple cider vinegar, and potato. I've sampled about 30 of these different flavors myself. 2002 would see the Kit Kat Chunky expand to Central and Eastern Europe. Not since the 1970s had the Kit Kat gone smaller with the two finger variety, rather than chunkier or with additional crazy flavors. However, in 2007, Kit Kat singles are introduced in Canada. A single serving bar is designed for those who want to eat a more portion controlled diet. This would prove to be very popular and would expand into more countries around the world. 2010 was the 75th anniversary of the Kit Kat bar. After looking back 75 years, there have been many variations of this bar. However, the classic Kit Kat really hasn't changed much of that at all. Best ad ever? Give me a break. Give me a break. Break me off a piece of that. I am totally blanking. What is the thing? Break Nobody tell him. What? No, why? You got it. You're so close. Break me off a piece of that. Break apple sauce. Break me off a piece of that apple sauce. I don't think that. Piece of that Chrysler car. Nope. Football cream. Okay. Ah! Today, there are still several variations coming out, particularly from Japan. However, some of these varieties are starting to spread around the world as well. Peanut Butter Kit Kat, Caramel Kit Kat, and Kit Kat Dark are now on the shelves all over the world. The classic bar is still the king of the brands and still selling strong. For me, the Kit Kat holds a special place in my heart. On Candy Critic, it's the only bar to reach a perfect score. However, this has a great deal to do with where it is manufactured. Personally, I find American Kit Kat bars to be subpar. The British Kit Kat bars are the best I've ever tried. 
When people ask me what my favorite candy is, I tell them I have two answers. First of all, I want to try something new, something creative, something I've never tasted before. But my second answer is always Kit Kat. Yeah. Uh-huh.